So Citadel Advisors is one of the largest hedge funds in the entire world, currently ranked as the sixth largest with an estimated assets under management of well over $50 billion. And by the way, some estimates go even way higher than that, like Copilot, for example, gives a range of over 70 billion. And the website that I use to track their specific stock portfolio lists a total value of almost 100 billion, which I'll show you in just a second. But regardless, the point is that they are extremely large. Now, what you have to know about Citadel is that it was founded by Ken Griffin back in 1990, who still serves as active CEO and chief investment officer and was also recently recently ranked as the number one most profitable hedge fund manager by LCH. Now, where some of the controversy comes in, the reason why I call Citadel kind of infamous is that Ken is the majority owner of both Citadel Advisors, which is the investing hedge fund, as well as Citadel Securities, which is one of the largest market makers in the world. They provide liquidity to the market and basically buy the information of what people are buying and selling in real time in the stock market from brokers like Robinhood, for example. And I'm not saying that they do this, but if one of those entities were to give insider information to the other, well, that would be highly illegal. So you can see how there's at least the potential for a conflict of interest here. And of course, when Robinhood halted the buying of GameStop stock a while back, a lot of people accused them of doing it for Citadel because they were part owners of other hedge funds that were shorting the stock and losing money at the time when you know people were running up the stock. Now, I'm not saying that any of these uh, allegations are true, especially for legal reasons, and all parties involved have really denied all of these things, and they've even won court cases for it, but I'm just saying that a lot of people have made you know certain accusations about these entities and you know, a lot of people aren't the biggest fan these, fans these days of some of them too. So uh, regardless of, of any of that though, the, the point is that Citadel is one of the biggest players in the stock market and they have gigantic, gigantic influence over the, the market. Well, they just happened to release their 13F filings to the public showing all of their stock trades in the previous quarter. And so in today's video, we're gonna run through the top five largest purchases of those, which by the way, they made some like huge purchases there. They made um, some big increases to their positions, giant increases. And uh, I'm gonna give you my own opinion on each one of these stocks. And I'll even rank them from best to worst as well based on that opinion too. So uh, it's gonna be a fun one. I love making these videos for you guys. I hope that you're enjoying them too. And if you do appreciate all the hard work and effort that I put into these videos, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing. Really helps me out a lot. It helps keep this channel alive. So thank you for all the support everyone. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at five big stock purchases made by Citadel. All right, now we'll be sorting these from smallest to largest position in the portfolio with purchase number one being none other than Disney, ticker symbol DIS, which Citadel increased their position on by a massive nearly 1,000% last quarter, bringing the position up to over $631 million, which is still only worth about half a percent of their portfolio. Now, the crazy thing about Disney is just how controversial the brand has really become in recent years when this really used to be one of the most beloved brands in the entire world. In fact, Fortune still ranks them as the most admired media and entertainment company for two decades in a row now. Now that might be a little hard to believe these days considering their poor performance of recent movie releases that flopped and costed them hundreds of millions of dollars, including the Marvels by the way, which was the worst performing Marvel movie of all time. It's kind of ironic for a movie that was lit literally called the Marvels. But uh, regardless, we've also seen Disney Plus lose around 15 million subscribers from the top two, and that's at a time when they should instead be growing since it's not even a profitable business yet, while their public approval ratings have also been trending downward as well. But despite all that, I continue to believe that there is still huge turnaround potential here. And the reason why is because these brands are still some of the strongest, if not the strongest in the world, even with all the controversies, which we've seen signs of recently. I mean, their theme parks, for example, are still seeing like crazy numbers of attendance and they're pretty much back to pre-pandemic levels too. In fact, I was actually just at, at a Disneyland last week for my birthday birthday and it was on a weekday by the way you know kids are still in school and I couldn't believe how crowded it still was but on top of that 
Disney recently released their Lorcana trading cards, which are selling like hotcakes. Every time I see them get stocked at Target, they get almost immediately sold out again, which tells me that, you know, there is still huge demand for their brands and their characters. Disney Plus also is expected to reach profitability this year and overtake Netflix in a couple more years. And even with the misfires in theaters, you know, Disney is still generating more box office revenue than any other company in the world. So, you know, they are still performing relatively well in that context. I mean, to think that you're going to get such a massively large company like this to, you know, be trading at a huge discount without any controversies or issues, that's just crazy, guys. You need something to drag it down. And that's exactly what happened here with the stock currently down close to half its entire value from the top, leaving them at a PEG ratio of only around around half of one. For me, that's a good enough discount for a world leader like this. And it's probably what Citadel is thinking as well, buying it for that turnaround potential. So I'm giving it the number two ranking for now. All right, moving on to purchase number two, though, we have actually uh, what used to be one of my, uh, a very large holding of mine, but actually ended up switching it for their biggest rival a while back instead. And that stock is the telecommunications giant AT&T, ticker symbol T, which they more than doubled their position on last quarter, bringing it up to over $851 million. Now, the thing about AT&T is that I used to really like them mainly for the strong cash generating business in telecom, which they, were able to use for paying a huge dividend. However, the company made a number of questionable decisions, namely some huge acquisitions in DirecTV, which they paid a whopping $67 billion for including debt, only to later spin it off for just 16 billion. And then Time Warner Media, which they paid over a hundred billion dollars for, only to later spin this one off too, resulting in a $47 billion loss. And as a result of these and many other mistakes, AT&T was ultimately forced to cut their dividend by almost half, which had previously been increased for 35 years in a row and was very high yielding. I mean, at one point, I think it even reached like north of 11%, but now it yields a more modest 6.5%, which is still pretty high too, though. But the stock itself has also crashed heavily, currently down almost half its value from the decade high to now one of the lowest prices in many years. To be honest, I have mixed feelings about the company that remains, though, because on one hand, I think they now have a much leaner business that is more focused you know, really on what actually generates reliable profits for them, and that's telecommunications, which was falling hard, but, you know, has now rebounded, and it should help them pay that more reasonable dividend going forward. Plus, the valuation is really cheap now at about 50% lower than the sector median, but gotta say also, on the other hand, growth is extremely limited, with less than 1% EPS growth expected on average over the next five years. And overall, I just continue to think that Verizon is the better option with a higher ranked quality of service an equally attractive valuation with the price also near a decade low, about the same cash flow, uh, slightly higher EPS growth, and about the same dividend too. So for me, it just comes down to that higher quality of service that I feel gives Verizon the competitive edge, but I'll still rank AT&T, you know, fairly high. I'll put them at number three just behind Disney because of that cheap valuation and the large dividend. Okay, moving on to purchase number three though, we have what is easily my favorite stock of the list so far, and that is Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN, which Citadel more than tripled their position on, bringing it up to almost a billion dollars in value. Now, as you guys are well aware of, I frequently talk about Amazon in a lot of my videos, so I'll try to make this as short and sweet as possible. Yes, Amazon stock is already up a lot, currently trading near an all-time high after climbing by close to a thousand percent over the past decade, and sure, it'd be great to you know, be able to buy it at much lower prices. I mean, I bought a ton of it myself before the huge run-up, and also during a big crash these past couple years. But even where it trades today, I actually think that it's still, you know, not as crazy uh, expensive or, or as crazy to be buying it here um, as you might think, especially for anyone that is not already in the stock and that needs to just kind of start building up a position in Amazon. Because even the valuation, it's only 10% higher than the sector on a PEG ratio basis. It's actually also 77% cheaper than their own five-year average on a forward PE ratio as well, if you can believe that. 
And that's because Amazon has so much dominance and growth potential still, especially on the bottom line. See, on the top line, Amazon already does over half a trillion dollars in sales, which is somehow still growing at a double digit percent. But on the bottom line, their net income is still tiny by comparison because Amazon figures that they can just worry about profits later while they continue to expand and grow. But in the future, those profits could easily multiply by many times as Amazon dominates, you know, some of the biggest markets in the world, like online shopping and cloud computing, with also heavy exposure to online advertising, AI, video streaming, and so much more, really entering new markets all the time. I get that it's expensive, but frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Amazon easily gets the number one ranking from me because it's just that good of a company and, uh, I like the stock long term. That will, however, leave us now, though, with the final two purchases of the list, which are also the largest of the portfolio relative to the rest of these. And uh, coming in at purchase number four, it's actually going to be a little hard to rank this one for several reasons. But that stock is the ultra popular semiconductor and AI specialist known as NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, which Citadel increased their position on by over 76% bringing it up to around $1.8 billion worth in the portfolio. Now, the tricky thing about NVIDIA is that they, of course, have an amazing business, but the stock price has skyrocketed by huge amounts in recent years. In fact, I just put out a video yesterday called Is NVIDIA Stock a Bubble? Which I highly recommend that you watch that video if you want a more like in-depth look at NVIDIA stock right now. But just to give you kind of a like a very short summary of that, well, the stock has now risen by close to 20,000% in the past decade, and yet because of their amazing work in artificial intelligence, among other things, their total addressable market is estimated to be around $1 trillion, which is 17 times larger than what they did in total sales last year. And because of their growth on profits, their forward-looking valuation is actually not as expen expensive as you would expect it to be with a PEG ratio that is around 50% cheaper than the sector median and even their own five-year average average, if you can believe it, is also uh, that cheap as well. Still, I do feel that Amazon is the larger, more diversified company, while Disney has more turnaround potential. And both companies, by the way, have you know much smaller market caps as well after NVIDIA rose to become the third most valuable company in the world at over $2 trillion. So my gut tells me that you know just because of this huge run-up, NVIDIA should probably go right under them at number three. Although to be honest, I can't really choose between them and Disney. I feel like they're really tied here and, and they're so hard to compare because they're just so different. But you know, I don't want to be that, that like annoying political person that can't give you guys a straight answer. So I'm still going to I'll give you guys an answer. I'm going to put NVIDIA behind Disney because of the recent run up, even though I don't really want to. But, you know, I want to give you an answer. So that's what I'll do with it. Uh, but with that said, guys, we are now left with the fifth and final purchase here, which is also the largest position of the list. And that's actually going to be an ETF in the SPY S&P 500 ETF, which they more than doubled their position on last quarter, bringing the value up to over $2.6 billion. But there's not really much to say about this one other than it's just really a very popular ETF that is based on the broader market at large, specifically the S&P 500 index, which is made up of some of the largest American stocks in a single basket that you know it can really be used for either a more hands-off approach to long-term investing because it's basically just investing in the market itself or it can also be used uh, and it does actually get used very often for short-term trading and options trading because of how liquid it is in fact spy is the number one most traded etf in the entire world it's also very reliable being provided by state street which is one of the largest asset management companies in the world too and because its performance is so heavily tied to to the broader market, it tends to usually climb in most years, currently up over 172% in the past 10 years to just about an all-time high, with also a small dividend to go along with it of about 1.3% too. But for me personally, I just prefer choosing my stocks individually one by one, trying to find the best growth opportunity or value or even dividend, whatever happens, you know, whatever I happen to be looking for at the moment. And because I actually like every other stock mentioned on today's list, I'm going to have to rank this one in last place at number five, 
even though I do actually think that it would fit pretty well in most people's portfolios, especially beginners. But there you have it, guys. Overall, I gotta say, I kind of like these moves here by Citadel, and I can you know, definitely understand why such a large entity like this would make moves like these in some of these specific you know, large companies. Now, I would only make a few changes myself, though. I would replace the SPY ETF with something more exciting that either has more growth potential or a larger dividend, something like that. And then I would also replace AT&T with Verizon, who I just like a little bit more. But apart from that, I love Amazon, I agree with Disney, and Nvidia is actually my second largest stock, but I just worry about how much it's climbed up recently, but otherwise, it's still a great long-term business there as well. So no complaints from me. Uh, I, you know, I think these are all pretty solid choices, but what do you all think? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you like any of these purchases? Do you agree or disagree with anything I said today? And what moves are you guys making out there in the market? I'd love to hear about that too. But thanks again for stopping by my friends. I hope that you're all doing well and I wish you the best of luck with anything you do in the stock market, but uh, I will catch you in the next video. All right, take care everybody. Uh, bye-bye.